All right, in this video, I'm going to overview the procedure sections of Lab 5. There are three sections, A, B, and C. And in section A, we're going to observe and measure the distance to an RR Lyrae variable star in a globular cluster. This is a cluster of stars that orbits our Milky Way galaxy. In section B, we're going to measure the distance to a Cepheid variable star in a nearby galaxy. And in section C, we're going to measure the distance to a type 1a supernova in a faraway galaxy. So let's go into section A. And in the first part, we're going to put in our observation. This is a pretty extensive observation. You're going to observe a globular cluster once an hour, 50 times. So this will take at least a few days and more credits than you have in your student account. For this reason, your instructor will put in a single observation to be shared by the entire class. And they should have done this at least a week ago. So the data are now ready for you to use. Now, which globular cluster you observe depends upon the time of year. If it's fall in the Northern Hemisphere, you'll observe NGC 1261. We've provided you with its finder chart here, which you'll use in the next section. And we've actually given you four possible image rotations and flips to make it easier to find the R Lyrae star and the reference star in your image. In each one, we've marked the position of the R Lyrae star and the reference star. And you'll use the reference star to calibrate the apparent magnitude that you measure for the R Lyrae star. For this, you need to know the true known magnitude of the reference star, and that's listed here. If it's spring in the Northern Hemisphere, you'll instead observe NGC 3201, and we've provided its finder chart here, and the true known apparent magnitude of the reference star that we've marked here. And if it's summer in the Northern Hemisphere, you'll observe M28. Again, we provided the finder chart and the true known apparent magnitude of this reference star here. Instructions for putting in this monitoring observation are given here. We provide a link to the tutorial from lab three, where we first showed you how to put in a monitoring observation. And we have a shorter version here specific to lab five. In particular, your instructor should watch this before putting in the group observation. Before moving on to the next section, you'll need to mark which globular cluster your group observed. This sets the auto grading for the rest of the lab. So be sure to mark this correctly or else you can lose a lot of points. Let's go to part two, where we're going to measure the distance to this R Lyrae star and hence to the globular cluster. In one of the background sections, you learned how to measure the brightness of, or photometer, objects in a single image. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to do this in all of your images simultaneously, saving you a great amount of time and effort. This is called batch photometry. After watching the tutorial, we have a few reminders for you to read and then go to Afterglow and batch photometer the R Lyrae star and the reference star in all of your images. You'll then download this photometry to a CSV file. Then I want you to watch this tutorial on period folding. It's done by a colleague of mine, Aaron Lacluse from Central Michigan University. After that, go to the graphing website and select variable. And then watch this tutorial on how to upload your CSV data, how to graph it, and how to period fold it. After that, we have a few reminders for you. 
but then carry out the graphing activity, download your final graph onto your computer, and then upload it to WebAssign here. Then you can enter the period that you measured in this box here, and we ask you the following question. Is this period consistent with the star being an RR Lyrae star? This information is in the background sections. If so, what is the star's average absolute magnitude? Think average luminosity. This is also in the background sections. Next, you measure the star's average apparent magnitude. Think average brightness. And you do that by looking at your period folded light curve. Find the peak, find the trough. The average apparent magnitude is the point halfway between the two. Read that off your graph and you can enter that here. And then take the absolute magnitude, take the apparent magnitude and using the distance equation from one of the background sections, you can calculate the distance to the RR Lyrae star and hence to the globular cluster. Show your work here. Look up the true value to that globular cluster here. Calculate your percent error and discuss sources of error here. In the next section, we're going to use a Cepheid variable star to measure the distance to a nearby galaxy. There are very few Cepheids that are bright enough for our small telescopes to detect. So I've selected this one for you, and it turns out it's a very long period Cepheid, too long for you to carry out in a reasonable amount of time. Consequently, we have already observed it for you, and you can find those observations in Afterglow's sample directory under Astro 101 Lab, Lab 5, Nearby Galaxy, NGC 6822. We've provided you with a finder chart with two possible orientations. The Cepheid is marked, as is the reference star, and the true known apparent magnitude of the reference star is given here. Again, You'll go to Afterglow and you'll batch photometer the Cepheid star and the reference star, but be sure to read these reminders first. Once you've done that in all of your images, you'll download the photometry in the CSV file. You'll go to the graphing website. And again, you'll upload your CSV data, you'll graph it and you'll period fold it, but be sure to read these reminders first. Some of the instructions differ from when you did the RR Lyrae star. Once your graph is done, download it onto your computer and upload it to WebAssign here. Then, as before, you'll enter the period that you measured here. And we ask you, is this period consistent with the star being a Cepheid? You can find the answer to that in the background sections. If so, calculate the star's average absolute magnitude. Again, you should be thinking average luminosity. There's an equation for this based on the period in the background sections. You show your work here. And then you measure the average apparent magnitude. Again, you should be thinking average brightness by finding the point halfway between the peak and the trough of your folded light curve. Enter that here. And then using the distance equation, calculate the distance to the Cepheid star and hence to this galaxy. Show your work here. Look up the true value, calculate a percent error, and discuss significant sources of error here. Lastly, we're going to use a type 1a supernova to measure the distance to a galaxy even farther away. Now, 
Since these cosmic explosions occur unpredictably, we're going to use archival data collected by prompt a number of years ago. This is a supernova explosion that prompt discovered. Prompt is one of the leading discoverers of supernovae in the Southern hemisphere. Here is a finder chart. You can see the galaxy here. And we've marked a reference star and it's true known apparent magnitude is listed here. You can get this sequence of observations in Afterglow's sample directory under Astro 101 Lab, Lab 5, Faraway Galaxy, NGC 2765. Now, you may have noticed that we did not mark the supernova in the finder chart. You're going to have to figure out which point of light here is the supernova explosion, just as the discoverers of this supernova did when they collected the data. For that, we have a tutorial here. And after watching it, read these reminders and then go into Afterglow and following the instructions, identify which object is the supernova explosion. You'll do this by creating something that's called a difference image. Save it and upload the difference image to WebAssign here. And then save the image of the galaxy with the supernova marked and labeled and upload it to WebAssign here. Once you've identified which point of light is the supernova, read these reminders and then go into Afterglow and batch photometer the supernova and the reference star in each of your images. You'll save that photometry to a CSV file. You'll go to the graphing website, upload that CSV file and produce a light curve. But first, read these reminders. There are a couple differences from the variable stars before. In particular, you're not going to period fold this light curve because it is not a periodic variable star. It's a one shot deal and we're not trying to measure a period. Then you're going to save your graph onto your computer, upload it to WebAssign here. And then we ask you, is this light curve consistent with the supernova being a type 1a explosion? For this, you have to look at how it fades away and the information you need is in the background sections. If it is a type 1a, what is the supernova's peak absolute magnitude? So you should think it's peak luminosity. This is also in the background sections. Then you need to measure its peak apparent magnitude. Again, you should think peak brightness and you measure this from your light curve. Enter the absolute magnitude here, the apparent magnitude here, and then using those two, calculate the distance to the supernova using the same distance equation as before. This will also be the distance to that galaxy. Show your work here. And then we give you the true distance to this galaxy. It's 56,000 kiloparsecs. Calculate your percent error and discuss significant sources of error here. Okay, that's it for this overview video.